Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own DC power generator. Previously in one of my earlier videos I showed a power generator that was bought from Amazon but the output power is very low and because it uses a small generator inside and whose internal resistance was pretty high but this one I built entirely from scratch buying individual parts uh, most of the mechanical parts I bought from Amazon and the electronic parts from a local supplier. I'll show you how to build such a generator and uh, uh, some of its applic applications. I used a low resistance or high current permanent magnet DC motor which will act as a DC generator. This one is bought from Amazon and its specifications are shown here. Rotating the armature with another motor and controlling the speed, I measured the output voltage at various speeds. The result is shown here in this plot. So to get 15 volt out of it, we have to spin the shaft at nearly 2000 RPM. At constant speed, I connected various loads at the terminals and measured the voltage and current. The characteristics is shown here in this plot. Due to internal resistance of 0.6 ohm, we can see a tiny droop. It should be mentioned that every generator has this internal resistance and in this case 0.6 ohm is on the low side. There are several mechanical parts needed and uh, these are some mechanical parts shown here to build the hand crank generator. Two sets of timing pulley belts and four pillow blocks. And these are bought from Amazon and part number is also given at the bottom. 8 T sliding nuts and 2 T slot aluminum extrusions are needed. These uh, special nuts can slide through these holes and screws on top can fix any attachment. This is the top view of the hand crank generator. The generator is screwed on a wooden base. Other parts are screwed on top of an aluminum plate. The two aluminum extrusion is uh, screwed on, a, on this aluminum plate. The pillow blocks can be moved freely on this T-slot after adjusting the belt tension, we can tighten the nuts to make the position of the pillow block firm on the T-slots. This is the front view of the hand crank generator. The two belt pulley system gives me a speed ratio of 1 to 16. That means if I make one rotation, the motor shaft will rotate 16 times. A close-up view is shown of the mechanical parts. This is the previous plot which shows the speed versus output voltage to get 14.5 volt at the output. Rotational speed needed is 1880. Uh, RPM which means 31 revolution per second as we know that the gear ratio is 1 to 16 hand rotation needed is 2 per second similarly we can see for one rotation per second we can get 7 volt at the output as the generator output voltage depends on the rotational speed the output will always fluctuate as our hand rotation will not be uniform, we need a voltage regulator at the output of the generator to get a stable output. In most of the applications, 
usually a switching regulator is used because of its higher efficiency compared to the uh, linear regulators a short key diode is to be used before the regulator for safety if we start rotating the handle in the opposite direction the polarity of the output will be reversed and that will be bad for the regulator circuit short key diode has a less voltage drop compared to the ordinary silicon diode to make the DC to DC switching regulator, I used an IC. The part number is TL494. The price is uh, less than a dollar and it works well in this case. Inside the chip, there are there is an oscillator whose frequency can be set with an external resistor and capacitor. It has two amplifiers for feedback control and two built-in transistors. Uh, these are there are few other components an inductor a diode and two power transistors are also needed uh, this is the basic uh, switching regulator circuit the oscillator frequency is set at 20 kilohertz using one nanofarad cap and 50 kilo ohm resistor the output gives a pwm signal which drives the power transistor when the switch is on current goes through the uh, goes to the output through the inductor and when the switch is off the stored energy in the inductor is cycled back to the output through this diode the voltage feedback is not shown here the feedback will determine the output voltage this is the practical circuit diagram that I am going to use with the hand crank generator. The two power transistors uh, are used instead of one. This PNP NPN pair is called Zikli pair. It is a high gain switch, needs very little power to drive with less voltage drop across emitter and collector. Fraction of the output is used as a feedback to stabilize the output voltage depending on the values of the three res resistors r3 r7 and r9 and the output voltage is determined with only r3 and r7 in place each of 10k the output voltage will be 5 volt addition to this r9 gives uh, 12 volt at the output this slide shows how the output voltage varies with the value of the resistor R9. Uh, before using the switching regulator with the generator, it was tested with a variable power supply. The input voltage was varied from 4 to 15 volt and output voltage was measured. As you can see, the output voltage remains almost flat at 5 volt once the dc to dc switching regulator is connected as shown we have to think of some some voltage drop for instance this short key diode will cause a drop of 0.3 to 0.5 volt depending on the load current there will be drop approximately 1.5 volt to 2 volt at the dc to dc gen uh, converter it also depends on the load current. So at the input, we need 7.5 volt to get 5 volt at the output. This slide shows if we wish to charge a 12 volt lithium ion battery pack, what would be the input voltage needed? The needed input voltage will be around 14.6 volt similarly we can say that to charge a 12 volt lead acid battery which is commonly used in car we need 16.5 volt at the input that should be generated by this hand crank generator as there will be a drop of 2 volt across a dc to dc converter to charge a lead acid battery we can use only a short key diode then we need 14.5 volt at the generator output 
we have to monitor the output voltage of the battery so that it never exceeds 14.1 volt to prevent uh, overcharging. We need to monitor this voltage. Uh, this is the motor which is acting as a generator here and this is the first pulley belt with a speed ratio of 1 to 4 and this is the first set of pillow block and another uh, pulley belt and the another set of pillow block and the handle is uh, run through the second pulley You can see if it rotates one rotation and the motor will rotate 16 times. And these two pillow blocks, the distance can be adjusted with these two uh, screws. Now I am connect, uh, connecting a voltmeter and measuring the voltage. You can see as the speed goes up, the voltage also goes up. And now a load is connected. It's a 6 volt lamp. And now it takes a little bit of effort as a lot of energy is needed to uh, run the lamp. You can see the lamp is glowing and the voltage across that is shown here in the meter. Now I am testing the DC to DC converter. Uh, input voltage is increased and output voltage is measured. You can see that as the voltage goes up but the input uh, at the output it remains uh, almost flat at 5 volt. So now uh, this DC to DC converter is connected with the generator and at the output the lamp is connected as a load and it shows the voltage and current. You can see the voltage is nearly 5 volt and the current is 1.18 amp. Now I am charging a cell phone. Uh, connecting the output 5 volt to this uh, cell phone charging input. Now I am charging a lithium ion battery pack. So the same way it is show, the 2 meter shows the voltage and current. Now it uh, takes a lot more higher voltage than 5 volt 